Hey guys, I'm Ozzie Gillen and welcome back to our bid to find baseball's greatest team. Today we move on to the National League side of the knockout draw and it will be the 1980 Phillies against the 1994 Montreal Expos. Now in their regular seasons, the Phillies went 91 and 71 and in what I'm assuming was a strike affected season in 94, I think that sounds familiar, the Expos went 74 and 40. So um, it's still a pretty good season. I don't obviously I'm not going to work out that percentage. I'll hurt my head if I try and do that. But um, it's yeah, I mean, it's not great, is it? Because or is it great? I can't figure it out. Anyway, let's just move on quickly and check the starting rosters for these two. Uh, I should say we default to modern era stats. If you are a strategy, I should say if you are new, um, it's World Series rosters if available. If not, I believe it defaults to opening day and there will be no injuries in this game. So these are the rosters for both teams with their uh, season stats for their particular season. So 80 for the Phillies, 94 for the uh, for the Expos. And uh, if you want to zoom in, you can zoom in, pause, have a bit of a longer look at this. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to go and check the starting lineups. And here they are. So leading off the 1980 Phillies is Lonnie Smith in left field. Pete Rose at first base, bat second. It is Blake McBride in right field, batting three. Mike Schmidt at third base, cleans up. Gary Maddox at, at center field, bats five. Many Trillio or Trillo. There's no other eye in there. He bats second at uh, six. It is Larry Boa batting uh, seven at shortstop. That's only two-star rating. Wow. Uh, Bob Boone catches at eight. And Steve Coulton is the man on the mound for the Phillies. Very, very highly rated indeed. And then if we go and have a look at the 80, uh, 94 even Expos, Marquis Grisham in left uh, center field, sorry, leads off. Will Cadero shortstopping at two. Moses Alou in left field bats three. Larry Walker in right field cleans up. Sean Berry at third base bats five. Darren Fletcher catches at six. Randy Milligan at first base bats seven. Mike Lansing at second base bats eight. And Jeff Fascio, Fascio, Fascero. Anyway, he's pitching. You can see it there. I just can't talk. All right, I am excited for this one. Let's get this game underway. A uh, big thank you as ever to the channel members and Patreons as they scroll across the bottom there. And if you are wondering how we got to these two teams playing, uh, the Phillies had to come through an inter-franchise playoff. I'll leave the, 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 the link to that video if you want to watch uh, how they got here in the uh, video in the description below the video it's going well uh but the montreal expos 94 was just the uh that was it they didn't have to do anything really to get here uh and maybe that shows because with no one out there is runners at second and third here as pete rose drives one down into the right field corner and it'll bring Blake McBride. Do I call him Blake? I mean, you'd think your name would be... Is it, surely that's a typo on the birth certificate. As he lines it to the first baseman. Oh, I thought he was going to have a go at third there, but no. So one out, runners at second and third for Mike Smith. I wonder if they consider walking him to get the force. It's a 3-1. They do. Not an intentional. That's one of those will pitch outside the strike zone. And if he swings, fantastic. Uh, Gary Maddox now... Let's see what he can do. 2-2 pitch. He's hit it into left field, and it is dropping in. So it is going to be a 2-RBI single. The Phillies have a 2-0 lead, and there is one out for Trillo to come up to the plate. It is an 0-1. He gets it into left field. Is that going to drive in another run? I wonder. They're going to try and get him at the plate. They're not going to do it, I don't think. And it is now 3-0 with one out. I've got to say, I'm a little surprised as uh, Larry Boa comes into bat. Uh, Pedro Martinez, a young Pedro Martinez. That could be a double play. No, just one. He was on the Expos, I think I saw on the roster. I'm surprised that he didn't start. Maybe he was a little too young in 1994. Uh, Bob Boone now with runners at the corners, two out. Can the Expos get out of this with something resembling a chance? And it looks like they do. So it is 3-0, though, to the Phillies after the top of the first. Grissom will face Carlton now. Let's see what he can do. A 2-2 pitch. And a strikeout. He wasn't even close to that. In comes Cadero now. A 3-1. Can we get a base runner for the Expos? Yes, we can. All right. In comes Moises Alou. A 1-0. And Alou gets it into right field. Is that going to get runners at the corners? And we're going to try for it. And he is going to get there. So Larry Walker now. Runners at the corners, one out. He could tie the game here, or he get into a double play. Either way, they'll, did they get the man at second? Did they get him at second? They did. So still, runners at the corners. And Sean Berry now, with two out. Full count. Berry strikes out, and it will still be scoreless for the uh, Expos as we go into the second. 
All right, it is Carlton now the pitch up to lead things off. It's a full count. Oh, and you've walked the opposition pitcher, and worse than that, he's the leadoff man as well. Lonnie Smith now, who walked first time around. It's an 0-2. He grounds it into a double play, surely one. No, just one. Smith is quick, isn't he? And he's able to uh, make sure there's no double play. Pete Rose, who's one for one. A 2-2. Pete Rose pops it up. And that will be uh, two away. Runner will stay at first, obviously. And it is Bake McBride. I know he's, uh, he is 0 for 1. First pitch, ground ball, third base, should do it. And we'll go to the bottom of the second. Much better there for Montreal, wasn't it? Montreal, now Montreal obviously, and I say obviously, I'm fairly confident. They became the Washington Nationals, didn't they? Was it just crowd attendances? Was that the reason that they moved? I, I mean, it's usually the reason, isn't it? Because if the support's there, then there's no real reason to move. Or was it that it was sort of like a political behind the scenes? They wanted a team in Washington. Um, yeah, but I mean, Baltimore's right there, isn't it? And obviously, Baltimore has a team. So, yeah, I was never quite sure, because the Expos, certainly growing up in Australia, were one of the teams that you you kind of you kind of saw, you know, the hat and the logo um, every now and again, sort of within the baseball, because I played uh, t-ball and that growing up. So, so within that community, you would see the occasional Expos thing. But I think I've said before in the comments, the only teams that really we ever saw uh, growing up... Oh, and that's over center field's head. Uh, with the Yankees and the Dodgers. That was pretty much it. And it's going to be a triple, is it? So Mike Smith with a leadoff triple for the Phillies. And that is going to be that. Maddox now, who of course drove in two runs in the first. It's a 1-2 pitch on this occasion, and he has popped it up. And there'll be no chance to score on that one. So one away, runner at third for Trillo, who's one for one with an RBI already. An 0-2 pitch. And that is in to left field. It's caught and it is going to drive in a fourth run. And uh, yes, not this guy's day, is it? Fas Fasero. It is Boa now. A 3-0 pitch with two out and they've walked him. And it is going to be Pedro Martinez. Now it is a 22-year-old Pedro Martinez, but still, you expect he might do okay. Certainly can't do much worse than the starter did. And he starts with a pop-up to end the top of the third. All right, Lenny Webster now. So Pedro has come in further up the lineup. And the, so Webster is sort of the backup catcher that's come in here. So you suspect that Martinez is not going to get a great, deal of, uh, a great deal of time here as uh, Webster strikes out. Grissom now, who's 0 for 1. An 0-1 pitch. And he has popped that up. And that'll be caught for two away. <clears throat> you wonder if Martinez does sort of went, do a couple of scoreless innings and, and he comes up to bat if you would leave him in the lineup or not. As uh, there's a strikeout to end the top, uh, sorry, the bottom of the third. It is 4 0 going into the top of the fourth. And Colton will face Martinez. It's an 0 1 pitch. And that is a ground ball to the third baseman for one away. Yeah, like I say, I was, I was surprised that Martinez didn't didn't get the actual start but the AI picks the teams not me because um, I don't know who a lot of these older players are so we've got a one out single there so that is Lonnie Smith on base again it is Pete Rose who's one for two a 1-0 pitch there goes Lonnie Smith are they going to get him oh not quite I don't think very close in the end but runner at second 1-1 one, one. and that is popped up and I don't think there'll be a chance to get the runner over to third on that one so that is two away, and it is Bake McBride who is 0 for 2. First pitch, McBride to the second baseman. Should be easy enough. And that'll do it. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Can the Expos get anything going here? It is Moises Alou who is 1 for 1. It's an 0-1 pitch. And Alou up the middle with a pitcher killer, and that'll be a leadoff single. Only the second hit of the game, and they have both been from a lose bat. In comes Larry Walker now, who's 0 for 1. It's an 0-2 pitch. Walker strikes out. Nowhere near it again. And Berry now, with uh, he is 0 for 1 with 1 on, 1 out. 1-0 one -oh pitch. And that could be a... Uh, it's not quite well enough hit for a double play, I don't think, is it? Oh, it could be, and they it is. Well, that ends that nice and quickly, doesn't it? The Expos can get nothing going here. 
it is Smith to face Martinez now. Now, Martinez was the next man up, so he's got a, an extra bonus inning here. You suspect it might be his last, though. And that is going to be caught. I think if I was the Expos, I would be very tempted, given what he's done since he came on, to, to, to hit him here. You just wonder if he's more used to them on the mound getting outs than sort of one out at the top of an inning is going to be. I think it'd be different, perhaps, if you were sort of two out runners at runner at third or something like that. But to lead off an inning, I just think I'd, I'd be leaving him on. But he has gone off. It's Lou Frazier coming into pinch hit. And it is a 2-2 pitch. And that is going to be caught in right field. Just for a second then, I wondered if it was uh, going to float into the right center field gap. In comes Randy Milligan now. He is over, uh, he's over O's. We must have walked last time up. It's an 0-1 pitch. And Milligan, that is going to drop in over the second baseman's head for a one-out single. See, it looks even worse now, doesn't it? Because you've taken Martinez out of the game, who's doing really, really well on the mound, and the, the pitch hitter got out anyway. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong on that one, but that is going to get through as well, is it? Yes, he threads the eye of the needle. And we have runners at first and second with one away. And it is Lenny Webster now who's 0 for 1. A 3-1. Webster walks to load the bases, and suddenly the tying run is at the plate. One away, Grisham is that man at the plate. He's over 2. It's a 2-2 pitch. Oh, and he's watched it. He's watched it. It's 2 away, and it is Cadero now who is 0 for 1. Don't, just don't watch it. At least he swung. At least he swung. But they leave them loaded in the bottom of the 5th. And they haven't had a chance like that all game, have they? Tim Scott will be the new man on the mound. He will face Larry Boa. It's a 1-1 pitch. And that is sort of scooped into right field almost, wasn't it? So it is a leadoff single. And I think it's the second hit of the game for Boa as well, isn't it? It is Boone now coming in. He's over 2. It's a 3-1. Should have left Martinez on the mound. I don't want to bang on about it, but I'm going to... <laughs> I am clearly a strategy genius at this game. The pitcher comes up, lays down a bunt, and it's a really good one. Runners were going as well. And so with one away, runners at second and third. And you do think any more runs here, and it could be that could be it. Lonnie Smith, who's one for two with a couple of walks. That's a loose one. Gets away from the catcher. It is now 5-0. There is a runner at third. There is one away. And Lonnie Smith, with a full count, draws the walk to go to first. Now he'll almost certainly be stealing. Pete Rose is at the plate. He's one for three. It's a 2-0. Pete Rose into right center field. That'll score one. It might even score Smith from first. You know, he is quick. And Pete Rose will have a two RBI double. He goes for third. And I think they got in, did they? No, he's safe as well. So it's seven nothing. There's a runner at third. Uh, you feel like that's it. Jeff Shaw. Who is a name I recognize. Did he ever pitch for the Mets, I wonder, back in the late 90s? Anyway, that's another hit into left field. That will score another run. It is now 8 nothing, And it has to be said, these Expos look a little bit out, out, just outclassed here, don't they? Smith, who is 1 for 2. 2-2 two, two pitch. That is into deep right field. That is going to leave. And that is double digits. It is 10 nothing now. 366 feet, six runs in the sixth, and they've got 10 runs on nine hits, which is always infuriating as well if it uh, happens against your team, isn't it? So Gary Maddox now, he is one for three with two RBIs. It's a 1-0 pitch. And again, I don't want to come back to it. They should have just left Pedro Martinez on the mound. He was doing really, really well. And Trillo now. He is one for two with two RBIs. First pitch. That is well hit into left center field. And that'll be at least a double as well. So the chance of a seventh run in the sixth here. Although there is two out. And we can only really hope for the Expos' sake that they kind of make a game of it somehow. Larry Boa, who's one for two. It's a 2-1 one, one pitch. Boa has popped it up into center field. That should be caught. That'll be that. But you suspect that the game has been... Uh, put beyond the Expos at this point as Carlton. And the thing with Carlton, ERA, where's, where is he up here? ERA for the season of 234. I mean, he doesn't give up runs, does he? Alou will lead things off. Has he got a third hit? No, he's going to be out by the second baseman for one away. 
in comes Larry Walker now, who's 0 for 2. A 1-0. And Walker has got a hit, has he? Oh, he's robbed. Well, that just sort of sums up their day, doesn't it? So two out, none on now for Berry, who's 0 for 2. It's an 0-2 pitch. And Berry strikes out to end the sixth. So it is still 10 to nothing. Boone will face Shaw. Boone is 0 for 2. It's a first pitch swing. And Boone grounds it to the shortstop for one away. Next man up is the pitcher, Colton. So he looks like he's going to continue a 3-1. And that is grounded to the first baseman for two away. And it'll bring up Lonnie Smith, who is one for two. He must have had ten walks today as well, I think. It's a full count. And he's about an hour late on that one. And that'll do it for the top of the seventh. We will stretch at ten nothing. Anything could happen yet, though. So, welcome back. If you came back, welcome back. You must be back if I'm welcoming you back. Uh, but Lo, uh, Lou, even, Frazier, will, uh, he stayed in the game. He will lead things off. And he's hit that over center field. Now, are we in inside the park home run territory? Doesn't look like it. And he's not quick enough anyway. So a leadoff double. Could the Expos get a run in the bottom of the seventh? I mean, you don't want to see anybody get that badly beaten, do you? I say Frazier's not quick. I mean, he's pretty quick. As Milligan strikes out. It'll bring Lansing up. He's one for two. First pitch. Lansing with a pitcher killer. And that should open the scoring for the Expos. They're on the board. I think they are. Yeah. Oh, he's at second. Why didn't they just hold the ball at second? <laughs> it was right there. You just had to tag him. Anyway, it's 10-1. Lansing with an RBI single. He gets these over the second, though. And it is Webster who's 0 for 1. A 1-2 one pitch. And Webster grounds it to the third baseman. That'll be two away. And in will come Juan Bell, who is pinch hitting into the pitcher's slot, which is actually sort of the leadoff spot to start the game off. But uh, not anymore. He strikes out. It's a 10th strikeout of the game for Colton. And we'll go to the 8th. Ken Hill will be the new pitcher. He's going to face Pete Rose. Pete Rose is 2 for 4 with 2 RBIs. It's a 1-2 pitch. This is, I think, like a 39-year-old Pete Rose as well. So, you know, he's going okay. And he is caught out there in left field on that occasion, though, for one away. It is Bake McBride, who is one for four with an RBI. It's an 0-1 pitch. And McBride grounds it to the shortstop. That'll be two away. And next man up will be Mike Smith, who is two for three. He's got a home run, a triple. And he's going to get thrown out at first on that one. It's one of those, you, you know, once you get the triple, and then you follow it up with a home run, you're, you're thinking cycle, aren't you? You've got the two really difficult ones out of the way. Cadero will lead things off. He is 0 for 2 today. It is a 3-1 pitch. If there is any way back for the Expos, which there in all likelihood isn't, but they just, they need base runners, don't they? Moises Alou is 2 for 3. It's a 2-1 pitch. And Alou is going to empty those bases for them, as that is a double play. And it's like I said, they've just got nothing. Well, they've got something going, I suppose. They've scored a run, but just not been their day. Walker, 0 for 3. It's a 1-2 pitch. Walker forgets the swing. And we will go to the ninth. They've not been devastatingly out hit either. It's very much, uh, again, if you're a regular of the channel, sort of a Cubs sort of playoff outing, isn't it? We've not been, not been dramatically outplayed, but the score <laughs> certainly left us with a bit of a uh, red backside as we've been kicked around all over the place. Trillo strikes out. So that is two away in the top of the ninth. Boa now, who is one for three. It's a 1-0 pitch. He has hit that well into center field. It's sort of not really well enough, though, is it? As it is caught out there to end at the top of the ninth. So they just need nine in the ninth. It's Bob Walk, which isn't a great name for a pitcher. You want to make sure you're not walking too many. <laughs> and it's a full count. And he starts with a ground ball. And that is one away. In comes Lou Frazier. Now he's one for two. It's a 2-2 two -two pitch. Frazier has whacked that into left field. And that'll be at least a double for him. So his second of the game. You wonder why he didn't start. And, uh, well, runner at second. It is Randy Milligan, who's one for two. It's an 0-2 pitch. And Milligan strikes out. So that'll be two away. And last out, potentially, is Lansing. He is two for three today with an RBI. First pitch swing. Lansing has hit it. Has he hit it well enough? No, he is not. 
and the 1980 Phillies will waltz into the next round. So, not even close in truth, was it? It was uh, the Phillies from almost the first pitch in that one. So they will move on. They will face the winners of the next knockout game. That is the 1975 Reds and the 2007 Rockies. I suspect the Reds will be a little bit too strong in that one, but we've seen already, haven't we, in this knockout round. It's just a one-off game and anything can happen. So uh, hopefully looking forward to that. Let me know who you think will win that one, and I'll see you to, uh, yeah, to find out. Take care.